Hey guys, it's Carl here. Thank you so much for watching. You could be watching any video on YouTube right now, but you're here with me, and for that, I thank you. So today I wanted to talk to you about Selvedge Denim. You see this thing, this name thrown around, nobody really knows how to pronounce it, where it came from, it's kind of nonsensical. So we're gonna go into a little bit about what Selvedge Denim is, if it's any better than regular denim, what's the deal here, why am I paying $300 for a pair of jeans? We're gonna answer all those questions here. So stick with me. So salvage denim is nothing more than denim that is sewn on old style shuttle looms, the way they used to make them back when your grandfather was wearing these things. So the old style traditional shuttle looms used to weave the fabric in one continuous thread and it would create sort of a finished edge. And that finished edge or the self edge was really there just to kind of show you where the edge of the fabric was. But now they're starting to use it in decorative ways. So most notably you'll see it on the inside cuff where the seam is on the jeans, but Sometimes you'll see it on the back pocket like this. Sometimes you'll see it on a belt loop like on this pair of Gustins right here. It sort of becomes something that you want to show off. As a matter of fact, I've even seen imitation things that you could put on the inside of a traditional pair of jeans that you can buy now, Levi's or something like that, to make it look like it's selvedge denim. I don't know, don't fall for that crap, please. If you're doing that, just, just stop. So as I mentioned, after 1950, they started using projectile looms, which would have a much wider piece of fabric. They can make more pieces per roll, they could, you know, it was much more efficient. The problem was is that the weave wasn't quite as dense and the way that these looms worked, the edges were sort of frayed so they'd have to be chain stitched so they didn't fall apart. Now there's nothing better or worse, they're just two different kinds of denim. So salvage denim sort of made a comeback in the 1980s and it was referred to as premium denim and nobody really knew what it was, but it really wasn't until the early 2000s that the selvedge craze or the cottage industry of premium denim and these small denim makers really started kind of coming to the surface. And it's really great now because you have all these little guys who are buying this denim from places like Japan and the Cone Mills uh, White Oak Factory here in America, and they're making some really cool products. So for that reason, you have to be cautious because a lot of times this fabric is sourced at the same factories, the same places that are making this stuff, and it's just put together in a different way. There's really nothing different about the denim, especially if it's sourced from the same factory. Now let me clarify something. Selvedge denim is not necessarily raw denim, and I know that the two sometimes are used interchangeably, and I think there's a little bit of confusion as far as what means what. So selvedge denim, as we discussed, is denim that's woven on old style traditional mills in the traditional traditional fashion, it has the selvedge edge to it, the ID if you will, and that's usually used throughout. Now raw denim on the other hand is typically natural indigo coloring with no distressing or washing on it. So you get them straight as the way they came, they aren't washed. Uh, they, they will bleed sometimes onto fabric, onto your hands. You'll notice that they get a little blue. And the benefit of raw denim is that it will become unique over time and it will be personalized to the way that you move and the way that you wear them. If you always clip a knife on the outside or on the inside of your pocket, you'll start to see that wear pattern. It'll be unique to you and a lot of people really like that in the process of getting there. So some of the cons to selvedge denim is that they are stiff. Typically when you get these things, it feels like a suit of armor. You put them on and you have to walk around kind of funny in the beginning until they really break in, until those threads start to kind of break in and, and mold to the way that you move. It can be kind of uncomfortable. Some people really like that process because it's, it's sort of the whole journey of making a pair of jeans that fit you like none other. And I can understand that, but for some people who just want to put on a pair of soft denim and go about your day, this is not the type of denim for you. Now also that break in process can take quite a while depending on how often you wear them and the frequency of washing. These things can take weeks, months, maybe even years to really break in and feel good. Of course, when they do, they'll be almost peerless in the way that they are and their comfort and how unique they are. But getting there, if you're not ready to take that kind of plunge and commitment, maybe this isn't really where you wanna be spending your money right now. Now, as we discussed before, most of the time, the brands making these jeans are very small and, and they kind of do things in a quirky way, each one unique to the way that they are. And some people really like that. If you find a brand that you love and you love the way they do little unique things, perfect example, this pair right here is from a company called Clutch Monkey, which is unfortunately defunct now. Um, but this was actually my first pair right here. And they used to do things like this. They would have little duck canvas spots on it, like this fifth pocket. I also really like the way that they did their buttons. They had these really cool brass buttons that look like a wheel. And since it was a small company, things just didn't work out and they went belly up, unfortunately. 
but you have to get used to the way that each unique brand does things. The sizing is also kind of different because typical sizing that you'll find in the stores is what they call vanity sizing, and it's really there to make you feel better about yourself. As strange as that sounds because it's just a lie, I'm typically a 34, but I have to buy these jeans in a 36 because that's closer to the actual measurement of my waist. So you have to know your sizing, and a lot of times you can't try these on because they're not available. And that brings us to the other con as far as uh, availability. You can't find these in every store. Now Levi's has started to offer a salvage kind of branch, but these really nice brands, uh, again, Gustin, uh, Naked and Famous, uh, Mott and Bow, you won't be able to find them in brick and mortar stores, so trying them on is most likely out of the question. They'll offer different fits and they'll describe them as best they can and you have to have your measurements and you go in there and hopefully what you ordered actually works, but there's no guarantees. And that's just kind of par for the course for smaller brands. Now the last con is sort of controversial because there's so much different information on how you should wash these, but cleaning selvedge denim. There are people who maintain that you never ever wash selvedge denim, that that's kind of taking away the whole thing. That's what you built into it. Now, I don't fall into that camp. I believe that if they start to smell, I don't care how cool they look. If you're starting to put people off by the odor of your jeans, you're doing it wrong. So. They, some people will say that you soak these in a cold bath, fill your bathtub up halfway with cold water, soak them in there with maybe a teaspoon of detergent, and that's how you wash them. Some people will also tell you that you're supposed to freeze them, that that kills most of the bacteria. At this point, I don't know what to believe. It's kind of hard to break it down to figure out what I should be doing. What I do is if they start to kind of get nasty, I wash them, and I wash them on cold and delicate and just get the gunk out of there and that seems to be working for me. Okay, enough of the cons, let's end on a high note. What are the pros of salvage denim? If you're gonna invest $100 plus in a pair of jeans where you could buy a pair of Levi's 501s for about 50 bucks, well, where is that extra money going? The first pro is that there is typically a tighter, denser weave. These definitely feel stronger and more substantial in hand as compared to a typical pair of Levi's 501s. And without having you here, it's really kind of hard to show you that, but this right here, this is a pair of Levi's, uh, a very well-loved pair that I really like a lot. This is a pair of Gustin, and you could kind of tell just in the way that they flop around that this pair right here has a lot more rigidity to it than this one does. And that part of that has to do with the weight, but part of it also has to do with the denseness of the weave. You could definitely feel that there's a much tighter weave, and a lot of people would argue that that is going to add up to increased durability. One of the other things that I really like about selvedge denim is that due to the looming process, you get these natural variations in the fabric. So they're not perfect. They don't come off the roll looking perfect. They have natural inconsistencies and a few little flaws, and that's what makes them unique. That's what I really like about selvedge denim, and you're not going to be able to get that so much with traditional modern day denim. Now the last pro, and I think it's more of a philosophical one, is the factories that are producing selvage denim and the companies that are sewing them into the jeans take more pride in what they're offering you. So they're, they're making this denim in an older way with a much narrower swath of fabric and, and really kind of taking pride in what they produce and then passing it on to the places who are making these jeans for you. Their cornerstone product most likely is the jeans and so they wanna do it right. So they'll do it with their unique little flares. And I think that that adds up to a better product. Furthermore, I would always support the smaller companies over the big conglomerates. Uh, you can actually talk to the owners in most cases of these small companies. You can get special orders. You can have things made easily. Whereas, go ahead and try talking to the CEO of Levi's. Let me know how that works out for you. The easiest way to distinguish a pair of salvage jeans from some typical modern day jeans is turn the cuff inside out. So this is a pair of Levi's. If you look at the cuff and where the seam is, you can see it's unfinished and they had to chain stitch to keep it from getting unraveled. That will, that's what makes this kind of unfinished seam here. Now it really doesn't matter because that's tucked in and you don't see it from the outside. That's why I still love Levi's, they're great. But if you take a look at a pair of selvage denim, the inside edge is finished nicely all the way up. So that's why a lot of times people will turn that up and they'll have this kind of cuffed look. And if that's your thing, great. If not, you don't have to have it. You can turn it down. But that's the easiest way to tell right there is this finished edge. And you'll see that most likely throughout the garment, but mostly you'll see it on the inside of the cuff. 
Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been informative. And next time you go to buy some jeans, maybe you'll take a look at some of these companies like Gustin or Naked and Famous because they make some really cool stuff. And if you're a denim head, if you're somebody who's really into this stuff, let me know if, if there's anything I forgot or just left out, or if you have another view on something, please let me know. I am learning about this stuff myself. And uh, I just kind of tell you my experience uh, with things and my research and go ahead and make your own decision. So I'm always interested to learn from people who may have more experience in a particular field than I do. So if you're a denim head, I'd love to hear from you. If not, Good luck on your jeans purchasing. Instead of going and buying those Levi's, maybe you want to take a look at one of these other companies and dive into the Selvage uh, rabbit hole. So thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. I'll see you next Thursday.